animus Hi everyone, I'm Ed Rodriguez and today we're going to be doing a deep dive of Nemesis which is the first expansion set for the Animus draft building card game and what this uh, expansion set does is it allows the players to play solo or cooperatively with each other or you can play a roguelike campaign if you're not familiar with any of this stuff go to the zero budget geek youtube channel and look for the official animus playlist it has overview videos of the game tutorials and all kinds of presentations to kind of uh catch you up to speed uh so for this video we're going to assume that you already know uh the basics of the game and we're just going to go into the cards and talk a little bit about the game design strategy you know whatever I'm treating this kind of like a fireside chat with the game designer and it's also a Q&A so if you've got some questions uh, just go ahead and put them down in the comments and I will definitely be answering them uh, as they pop up so uh, without further ado let's go ahead and jump in so Nemesis. Uh, well, as we already know from um, Vanishing Point, if you haven't seen that, you should go back and watch it. In Vanishing Point, the uh, there was a rupture of the multiverse, and basically all realms have been kind of opened up and fractured, and they're melding into each other, and uh, there's entities that are vying for control over it. Now, in Nemesis, uh, the story is going to focus on... Um, a, a one particular universe um, and in fact something that you may notice in animus is that uh, a lot of the cards have different artwork different art styles especially um, when you look at different sets so the first um, core set of vanishing point had a mixture of art styles to just introduce you to the multiverse and then each set after that has more of a consistent style but each art style is unique to that set and it's different from the others and it's, it's to represent that it's its own universe although it's going to be mixing in with the others so nemesis we are focusing on a world uh called necromancia and why did not my thing so uh after at once the uh universe was fractured um many entities from different worlds were able to invade other worlds and in here we're going to be in nemesis we're actually focusing on one world called necromancia which was a world that was um had a lot of trouble with like evil beings but then uh eventually uh great heroes rose up to fight against them and it became a peaceful land but with the uh rupture uh evil entities uh became more powerful and took over and basically raised it to the ground and left it in ruins and through different magics and powers they've taken control of all the denizens of this world and are using them for their nefarious deeds <clears throat> or nefarious goals which is basically to just uh, collect as much power power as possible and uh you know rule as much of the multiverse as they can so now that they've conquered this world there uh actually these are these are the the main six entities that have taken over necromancia and now they're spilling over into um other worlds and that's where the players come in they're invading your realm and it's time for you to repel them and that's basically it it's not that much of a deep story just kind of an excuse to just battle a bunch of uh uh wild characters uh from different universes so um just like in the first video we're gonna cover uh the entities first uh and then we're gonna go through the characters now one thing that's different about the expansion sets in the core sets every single card is a named character uh because they are an individual and um you know they're the cards that the players use so i want you to have sort of an attachment to them whereas in the expansion sets those cards are not cards that the players are using They're cards that are being used against the player their enemies and so the only cards that are actually named that have like 
<clears throat> character names are the six entities. They're named characters and they have histories. All the other cards are called minions. And rather than being sort of individuals, they'll be representatives of, bar of archetypes. And they'll have like sort of generic names like wizard or dark wizard or paladin or fighter. Stuff like that. So there won't be a whole lot of lore as far as the, the, the characters are concerned. But there is some to the entities. Uh, a lot of this because of the, it, the nature that it's expansion will be more focused on covering the mechanics of the cards in this video so let's just jump ahead because that was five minutes of babbling so first up we have Cthulhu here destroyer of mines referred to as the Kraken she is the progeny of Cthulhu and heralds his destructive arrival among worlds a mere glimpse of her horrifying visage can cause insanity on sight so we get a visit from the Lovecraftian universe with Cthulhu, and she's just here to just, um, basically just mess, with, you know, uh, acclaim power and mess with people minds. She, she destroy her minds. So what's her ability? Reaction: When any minion comes into play, the next player must damage one of their cards. So. In essence, what is going to happen is the nemesis is going to get a free damage every turn because the nemesis always plays a card on their turn. In fact, it's the first thing they do on their turn. So you can almost look at this as, as like start of turn, um, you know, deal one damage to a player's cards. Uh, but it's not worded that way because it is possible that you can get a board state where the nemesis cannot play a card and in fact that's one of the strategies you want to do maybe um let them get a full board so that they can't play extra cards and while you set yourself up uh, although that is a dangerous ploy but really against Cthulhu, it is a race. You want to try to unleash as much damage as possible against her um, so that she doesn't have too many turns where she's getting that free damage. And pretty much that's the strategy to, to battle against her. Um, uh, primarily just try to um, just focus her down and, and you know if you have cards with extra damage or cards to move damage around just so you can kind of kill things quicker, uh, that's the way to go. So that's Cthulhu. Uh, we have Lix Tetrax, Dark Angel, a fallen angel that always comes in the guise of a spirit of mercy and healing. She secretly arranges a she secretly arranges plagues and misfortunes and then shows up with a bargain to solve it. So basically, she's a another fallen angel. And we saw a fallen angel back in uh, Vanishing Point. And in fact, um, angels kind of one of the few recurring beings in the animus universe i guess i just happen to like angel characters um there there's quite you know there's a lot of them actually you'll see angels and demons are kind of recurring beings uh among others um so she's a dark angel but uh she is one that basically uh pretends that she's like a good one so she has this you know more holy look although she has these black wings and um yeah she really is a bad guy just pretending to be a good one wolf in sheep's clothing so what's her ability reaction when any minion comes into play the next player must heal any one minion so she's the opposite of, of Cthulhu, where she's going to be healing her minion so going along with her being a angel of mercy or angel of healing uh you know she's healing her minions but um at the same time, she's sending them um, um, at you to kill you. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so she's not a good guy. And as far as strategy on her, um, not much. Just uh, just have extra damage. Find ways to get extra damage. Um, have good uh, combat matchups um, because she will probably outlast you if you just try to if you take a passive approach so you want to um just like kathila you want to just be as offensive as possible and put extra damage on the board i mean i guess that's always a good strategy but in this particular case that's kind of uh the way you want to go uh there aren't really there's i think literally in the entire game there may be one card that blocks healing so uh, you're not going to be able to block the healing so next bet is just uh outdo the damage fortunately animus is designed that damage pretty much always outpaces any kind of healing so there you go you have that on your side so that's licks tetrax the dark angel 
We got Rosa Negra. After dying an unjust death, Rosa wanders the multiverse in an unfathomable rage against living beings. She strips away souls, leaving empty husks full of all her pain and anguish. So, not a whole lot of deep backstory to this. She's basically a, you know, a a ghost, a specter that's uh, floating around. But when the multiverse fractured and the animus energy went out, she got infused and became more powerful and was able to travel the multiverse. Um, and really, she is just, just like her name says, she is the spirit of undying rage. She just has this hate for living beings. But in this animus multiverse, um, it kind of serves a purpose for her. You know, she's able to defeat beings, kill them, and then collect their animus energy for more power. Um, and also to be able to, you know, call upon more beings and, and kind of have an endless cycle. So she's just a very, very hateful, um, almost... Um, uh, just ra irrational rage. That's the, the phrase I'm trying to say. Um, and what's her ability? So this card, I'm pretty proud of. This card, I wanted to do something extremely different from other uh, um, entities where a lot of them focused around card play and or damage. Uh, this one does something very, very different. When any minion card is killed, flip it face down instead of discarding it. It still triggers death and kill effects, so it counts as dying, but it is now a zombie with two melee, two flank, and no card type or special abilities. The zombie is discarded if it has any damage on it and is not considered killed for other effects. So, it's a lot of words to basically say that um, her cards essentially have an extra life to them, but as soon as they get down to the last life, they lose like all their abilities and they get much weaker. Um, it just means you're going to have to spend an extra attack, an extra action, you know, to get rid of her cards. It's a little bit easy because their stats aren't very good, but um, even as 2-2 two, two zombies, there is a chance that they may be able to um, hit your guys. And so she's going to be able to get extra damage and um, she can be kind of tough to deal with because, um, you know, she's just... Uh, or, or her cards essentially have one extra health and are going to be constantly attacking you she will very likely get a full board pretty quickly um so a strategy against her is any kind of damage shifting is you know can be really good because the zombies die as soon as there's any damage on them so if you have any kind of recurring damage shifting and you can move uh damage onto them you'll kill them right right away although they're really easy to kill um, like many things, just having um, just extra any ways to get extra damage is good. Although it, it kind of feels bad to spend a card's damage effect on just a zombie when you could just battle it and most likely win. So um, that's why I like damage shifting a little bit better. Uh, damage shifting often you can find, um, you know, you can often find more instances of damage shifting than direct damage. So um, that's why I recommend that. Uh, other than that, another tactic you can go, you can go the other way and just uh, have a deck with a lot of healing or use damage shifting for your cards and just sort of out, try to outlast her. But that's going to be really hard because you're using cards to try to outlast her where she just has a basic ability to do that so that is rosa negra all right seren ash the primordial gorgon a victim of a terrible curse she made an infernal bargain for immortality but was transformed into a terrifying creature however she's used her new abilities to amass great power so not a lot of backstory to this one she's just a like a you know a flaming gorgon and just uh you know, like many characters, uh, you know, especially the evil ones, uh, seeking power, just trying to be more powerful. And uh, she was turned into this beast. But now that uh, the multiverse is fractured, she's gotten even more powerful and has more means to wreak havoc. So what's her ability reaction? When any player's card kills a minion, that player must damage the card that killed it if possible. So this would seem familiar because you've seen uh, the unspeakable entity. It's basically the same ability. Well, wait a minute. Ed said in the last video or in other videos that every card in the game is unique and has a unique ability and that is true for the player's cards but the uh, nemesis cards reserve the right to copy they they're copycats so you will see some player abilities uh, um, appear on uh, the uh, nemesis cards um, but 
they won't repeat among them. So basically, she is uh, very similar to, um, or she's the same as um, the unspeakable entity, just very vengeful, and uh, the same, um, what do you call it? The same uh, advice applies. Uh, healing is good for you. Um, any kind of damage shifting and healing is good for you. You want to kind of outlast uh, the damage that you know is going to be coming your way. All right, and that's Serenash. We got Varina Drelia, the Soul Stealer. Varina Drelia's command of dark magic has elevated her to near godhood. She senses and can manipulate every soul released from its corporeal form and channel its power. So she's all about controlling souls. And she's kind of a, a warlock warlord and um, commands armies across the land. And she was already doing this kind of stuff before the um, multiverse and gaining more power um, just in... <laughs> has made her even worse so what's her ability the first time each turn a minion is killed or kills another card heal one minion this ability counts as used only if a minion is healed so this is uh the same ability that the nothing gets in uh the the player card the nothing uh gets in vanishing point uh you got that here as a, as a nemesis um one thing that i wanted to do with the nemesis set is i wanted it to feel like you're playing against another player um but still have its own feel um so you know there are some you're gonna see some some abilities that from from the other set or uh, from other sets uh kind of um shown here um yeah uh she's basically heals a lot so um just as before any kind of extra damage or instant kill effects are really good uh you can go the other way and try to just um you know uh, match her healing uh that's always good um but no no other really stupendous strategy other than just play well against her and uh, healing is great in this game but it's not the most overpowering thing in the world so she shouldn't be too hard if you're playing competently all right here we have winter echo inquisitive necromancer what started as a simple academic hobby has turned into an obsession to control death regardless of who she sacrifices since this makes her the bad guy she embraces the role so here's a card where i wanted to do something different some of the other cards were copies of abilities that you've seen before this one definitely is something different ongoing when any minion is discarded place it next to this card these cards still count towards the player's victory goal so very simply just whenever cards her cards get killed or minions just you just put them next to her they they still count as if they were killed as you should put it next to her because you need to count them for something because that's the next ability reaction when there are three cards next to this one randomly place one on top of the nemesis deck and discard the rest now mind you that second discard doesn't trigger her first ability where they go back to it all right so what does this mean it means that every three every time a third card of hers is killed she's gonna kind of resurrect one which uh if we remember so she's a little bit similar to uh lilith in vanishing point but lilith could only do it once per game she's gonna do it several times realistically she may do it twice in your game definitely once um maybe twice very unlikely for it to happen three times in fact many abilities in the game were um balanced around the fact that most of the time they're only gonna trigger you know two maybe three times in a game and sometimes just once um this is a car this is a character or an entity where um you want to play the long game so as always having extra healing and extra damage is good but you really just want to play conservative conservatively and safe and kind of protect your cards you don't want to take um risky combats um because you you need to outlast her she's you can almost assume as if she has like two extra cards in her deck that you have to get through so um so with her it's a little bit more of a marathon uh than a sprint as it would be with other other um entities all right and that's it for the entities so we're gonna go into the minion cards and like i said the minion cards are um they're more generic minions so they don't really represent uh characters so they don't have like a deep backstory uh to them all right so we have an arcane archer here. Uh, arcane archers imbue arrows with such powerful magic that they can pierce the toughest armor. And um, yeah, 
that's no not much story there ongoing all minions at plus one to their flank value so she's one of the few cards that actually has an odd stat line she's a two three where most cards you see there are two four or five one or a three three she's a two three which is really odd and that's because she gives herself the plus one and it really means all minions all minions across any battlefields will get plus one so i would say this is a priority target to kill uh, especially since it's worth three points so you see this hit the table you should go after it because it's gonna make uh the entire team um much more powerful so take this out you know you want to take out all the minions but definitely prioritize this one uh, this one you don't have to prioritize as much artificer um, Toiling away on endless projects occasionally our artificers invent something that reshapes society So play all players must reset their hands and draw the same number of cards So if you remember reset is put um, your cards on the bottom of your deck This will this means put your entire hand on the bottom of the deck But you're gonna get new cards and this really isn't that much of a draw it can be a drawback if you are planning things a certain way but it can actually also help you out so it's kind of just iffy it's, it's kind of a coin toss um and i didn't want all the cards to be just horrible cards that beat you up and kick your butt um this one here just kind of shuffles up your hand a little bit and it may help you something that's why uh in the, in um in the flavor text there it says sometimes they occasionally invent something that reshapes society well it reshapes your hand so that's really all that's happening there so that's an artificer no special strategy against this guy he's just gonna come out and mess with your hand and then that's it you battle him all right the assassin this guy um i don't know if i would say a priority target um he is worth three points um assassins often coat their weapons with a deadly poison so that a single neck to a fa victim is fatal and why is that because death sacrificed the card that killed this card so when you kill this card it's gonna get a revenge kill on the card that killed it so uh, I don't know if you want to consider this a priority target because on the board on its own It's not gonna do a tremendous amount other than being in you know in play battling. It's a 3-3 So it's gonna be good, you know pretty decent any uh, situation um, and You just want to set yourself up so that the card that kills it is one that you can afford to lose either It's a low-value card or, or a card that already had a bunch of damage on it uh, that's what you want to do with this, but you definitely want to kill this because it is three points So that's a good chunk of points to go after so that's the assassin We have the berserker here Berserkers relish diving headfirst into battle seeing their enemies flee or fall fills them with bloodlust Reaction when any player's card is placed into a discard pile heal any minion so yeah He's a um, healing card for the nemesis, although it only happens when one of your cards goes in the discard pile. Um, so pretty much whenever your cards die, uh, which if you're playing well, that won't be very, very often. And that's the strategy. Don't die. Just get good. Um, and, that, and that's the berserker. Uh, no special strategy against him other than, you know, his ability do actually doesn't really trigger that much. And if it is, you're already having a bad game. So stop that. The bishop here play he or right, let me go down to the flavor i've been reading the flavor text so the bishop bishops are empowered to confer divine directives they wield the mercy and wrath of their deity so play heal any minion card do this for a total of three times so he's going to heal up to three points total uh among minion cards but the players can choose what they're gonna heal right so that's the strategy just Heal the ones that you think you can kill already or um, aren't, uh, aren't priority targets because there's nothing you can do to really stop this. Um, so it's going to happen. And then after that, he's going to be in play and you can just treat him as, you know, just any other minion and beat him up and take those points. So that's just the bishop. Pretty straightforward. The Conjurer. Not only can they call upon powerful beings, but their summons linger even after con the Conjurer dies. So Death, play the top card of the Nemesis deck. So this card I, it's self-explanatory. When it dies, it's going to replace itself with another card. 
this being a level one card and not worth a lot of points, it may be worth it to not even go after trying to defeat this card. Let it um, just brush up against your defenses and kind of let it kill itself because um, you don't really want to kill this early and um, potentially have the nemesis have more cards in play than you or or, or or keep parity so build up your board and then eventually get around to killing this and um, you should be fine well, otherwise a pretty straightforward card being worth only one point uh, it's and, and its ability I would say it's a low priority target the Cryomancer. In the heat of battle, Cryomancers stay calm, cool, and collected, meticulously picking out their targets. So play. Each player must damage one of their cards. Pretty simple. There's not much you can do to stop this. Uh, it's going to damage one of your cards. Great thing is, is that you as the player get to choose which of your card is going to get damaged. And there's your strategy. Just put the damage um, where it least hurts you. Um, and other, other than that, it's just a play effect. So once this guy comes down or she comes down, um, you deal with the effect and then you hopefully won't have to deal with it again unless she gets resurrected by a uh, winter echo. Hey, all right. That's the crowd answer. We got the dancer here. Although very entertaining and a morale boost, boost for their allies, dancers can also serve as spies and saboteurs. Reaction, any player's effect that targets a minion must target this card instead, if possible. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of pain in the butt. I would say it's a priority target because it's going to mess up some of your effects. If you have some direct damage, they will have to go to, to this card. It is worth two points, so it's not insignificant to a uh, insignificant to defeat this so you know yeah if you've got the right matchup i would say kill this because it's gonna mess up some of your uh, other abilities um otherwise the druid druids protect nature from civilized intrusion with nature magic such as healing weather or plant related spells simple ability play heal all minions now there's a similar card in Vanishing Point that the players can use, which is uh, Sasha Darkwood, and she heals all cards in play. The Druid here is a little bit selfish; it only heals all minions. Um, and yeah, there's not a whole lot of strategy because you 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 usually are not gonna know this is coming, so this is just gonna come down and heal the minions, and that's it. She it's a one-time effect, and you just deal with her as is. Um, yeah. Not a whole lot to say about that. Um, it is a great target though, because it does that effect once and then it stays in play and it's worth three points after that. So um, yeah, good target to just go uh, chase down for points because it, it, it already it front loaded its ability and then it's, it's kind of done at that point. And once it's on the board, it's not really that much of a threat. All right, the fencer. Fencers swiftly switch their attacks from one opponent to the other, confusing the enemy. Play, each player must perform a damage shift on their cards. So this is one of those abilities that's not really that bad. Uh, it, it generally is actually gonna be kind of good for the player. Um, some of the nemesis cards can be there because the nemesis attacks kind of in dumb ways or, or um, just sort of blindly charges forth some of the card abilities for the nemesis are intentionally more powerful than something that i'll give to the player to balance it out i put cards in the game that their abilities are not so bad and could potentially even be somewhat helpful to the players just to kind of even out so that you're not feeling like you're getting dunked on the, the entire time so you get a free damage shift on your cards and most of the time that's gonna be um pretty good bear in mind it does say must perform a damage shift so you have to do it even if you don't want to so it could potentially be bad but most of the time it's gonna be a-okay and that's the fencer the fighter unarmed combat masters they employ a touch of death strike causing delayed death to a victim kind of similar to someone that we know before vando yakenza and i think it has the same ability death damage the card that killed this card so when he dies, he's going to get revenge on you. Um, this is another low priority target, I would say. It's only worth one point um, and you're going to kind of pay a penalty for killing it. Um, you know, 
so uh, i i would say you don't really need to go after this card while it's in play you just kind of um like i wouldn't i wouldn't really attack it directly i would kind of just let it there put a defender in front of it that can fight it uh but don't attack it use their attack for something else because he's gonna definitely attack on his turn and then kind of let himself bash his head against the wall and he eventually will die and then he'll do his effect and then you'll deal with it uh then uh but that's a fighter again i would say this this you actually don't really want to attack into this that much of course if you've got like some good healing or damage shifting effects in your deck then maybe that doesn't even matter all right that's the fighter the mountain giant immensely powerful it can take a bombardment of artillery to take down one of these fierce giants all right now this guy is a priority target he is got a melee of five and a flank of one now in the newest nemesis rules when when cards when the card when the minions come into play and their attack is higher than their um flank they get they perform a switch and move up so very likely most of the time this guy will be in melee position and is gonna um you know be a bit tough to deal with he also heals at the start of the turn so you have to focus down this guy you got to either get three guys in play that are a good matchup to him um or just have really good flank against him get some flankers or uh ideally some extra damage from damage effects or damage shifting but this guy can be tough if you don't deal with him you you have to deal with him this guy you can't just ignore him but like ah whatever you know um because uh, I like to think of this guy as he's almost a guaranteed one damage every turn on your melee. So um, don't sleep on him. Uh, try to take him out. And he's worth a big three points. So it's it's worth it to go after him. But you definitely don't want to um, just let this go unchecked. Here's, he go, here's another card you don't want to leave unchecked. The Gunslinger. These brave mavericks will face any foe and live or die by the speed and accuracy of their gun. And her ability is start. So start of turn. Each player must damage one of their cards. So at the beginning of each Nemesis turn. Same thing with the uh, Mountain Giant. It's the start of Nemesis turn. Not start of every turn. The start of the Nemesis turn. Each player must damage one of their cards. Now the good thing about this... Is that you get to choose what the damage is but the bad news is you're taking a free damage every turn and if she's paired with something like Cthulhu where Cthulhu is doing a damage every time she plays a card um, you know and, and even licks tech tracks um, this is a this can be a devastating card um, and I've had her uh, really wreck my board before so priority target you want to go in and kill kill this card as soon as possible thankfully it is a even though it's a gunslinger it is a more melee focused card uh, so get some flankers in and take her out and ideally you know shoot her with stuff um, because you this is a priority target and you don't want this thing around you want to kill this and it's worth three points so there you go. All right. Lord Command. Oh, man. We have three priority targets in a row. The Lord Commander. True leaders command great respect and allegiance through their actions and presence on the battlefield. Ongoing all min minions at plus one to their melee value. So this is going to make... Um, and, and, and he's another one with weird stats because he does uh, buff himself. This isn't quite as powerful as the Arcane Archer that we saw earlier where the Arcane Archer was buffing flank, which flank flank buffs will affect the game more. This is just melee buffs, which is still good, but not quite as good as boosting flank. Um, however, um, this could be bad. Imagine um, he boosts the you know mountain giant so the mountain giant having six attack uh yeah you'll be you'll be in um trouble if you leave the Lord commander so uh focus this guy down take him out he's worth three points you know you want it that's the lord commander we got the minstrel this is this card always makes me laugh Minstrels can deliver uplifting, uplifting performances, but for some, the fun comes from booing them off stage. Play. Remove one damage token from all minions in play and place them on this card simultaneously. So essentially, he heals all the cards, all the minion cards in play, 
um but then all those damage tokens go on him he can go above three normally most cards die once they get to three but because it goes on simultaneously he could take upwards of he could take like 10 damage on him they all come at once and then he would just immediately die right um so very often that's actually what's gonna happen and thematically when i was designing this card um the damage tokens in the game are red damage tokens and i imagine them they're like little red tomatoes that all the players are or the other minions are throwing at him to boom off stage and uh it makes them feel good so they feel healed i don't know that's my rationale for this guy the minstrel um he he's a jerk to see him because he comes and heals everybody and dies and so he's he may be a free point but he healed everything so he's usually going to leave the board state a little bit better than if he had been there so but there's not a whole lot that you can do about it he's just going to come in play very rarely will you be able to predict that so um you just have to deal with the aftermath of it so that's the minstrel the monk here another piece of artwork i love i mean i love all the artwork but um i just particularly like this one here spiritual martial art excuse me spiritual martial artists that specialize in turning their opponent's strength into their own advantage reaction when this card receives damage heal any other minion card so this one's kind of interesting where um it's gonna it is an offensive it's a melee card so it's gonna be attacking you you know running up front and trying to attack you um and generally it's gonna be up in melee position which means that um it's susceptible to attack from three places um and just bear in mind that when you damage it it's going to heal other cards the strategy is simple here just focus this card down don't try to spread damage around um focus all your damage on her kill her right away i would say she's a priority target uh, even though she's only a one point the ability to um potentially heal other cards is good and you don't want that so if she hits the table uh you want to try to just just defeat her as soon as possible so she doesn't get to heal um the other minion cards notice by the way she does not heal herself it does say any other minion card so that's the monk the necromancer necromancers commune with the dead either by summoning spirits or raising corpses for science <laughs> so I, I have fun writing that one i don't know all right it's believed is play take the bottom card of the nemesis discard and place it on top of the nemesis deck what a character card that can do a resurrection you know that i don't give that to the players but i definitely gave it to the nemesis and very simple it's going to take the bottom card of the nemesis discard and place it on top of the nemesis deck that may so it's essentially going to give them a free card back um however he is a level three card so it's worth killing him so he's getting a card back but he's putting three available points on the board for you to kill so he's worth killing um and you might notice the kind of odd wording here that says the bottom card of the nemesis discard uh the reason i worded it that way is because the nemesis always takes the first turn and it's quite possible actually sometimes even likely that the first card that the nemesis plays is ineffective like it may be a card that has a play effect and it kind of does nothing because there's nothing in play to affect it so this kind of gives those cards sort of a second chance so um yeah it 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 is a targeted um resurrection um but the and the, so the players don't have a choice on it it just it, it you just follow it um but again no other strategy on, on this card other than um you know just kill it for points the ninja although renowned for their stealth and covert methods ninjas come prepared for any battle so these guys are pretty cool they are three three so they are good in melee or range and their ability is here's one of the first instances i believe is the first instance of a card that has um one effect but triggering off of two keywords and this one's play and death so when you play this card and when it dies each player must damage one of their cards again that is not a main effect you must damage one of their, your cards but you get to choose what it is um so essentially this guy's gonna pull out um two damage at the very least because he's gonna do damage when he plays and then he's gonna deal a damage when he leaves 
um there's not a whole lot you can do about that um hopefully you have some healing or damage shifting to mitigate it but by the fact that you get to choose where to place the damage um that softens the blow however it is damage nonetheless so that's the ninja just i, <laughs> I wish you well against them they are worth two points that's nothing to sneeze at the paladin uh, I think this is another pr uh, premium card you want to kill. A paladin's appearance on the battlefield is often enough to rally their troops against incredible odds. Reaction: When a minion comes into play on this battlefield, choose at least choose any minion in play with at least one damage token on it and heal it. Oh, so this is like the Lix Tech Tracks ability. Um, and imagine if she gets paired with Lix Tech Tracks, um, healing two per turn. Uh, that can be devastating. You want to kill this right away because the Nemesis will almost always play a minion every turn so this is going to be like a free healing every turn so you want to do that uh fortunately again uh she is a melee type which leaves her open to some flanking maneuvers and that's what you want to do you want to kill this car because uh yeah she could you know you got to think of each heal that the nemesis does is like negating one of your attacks so yeah take this out more in fact if you ever have this in play and the lord commander you kill this first this is i think a more priority target uh than than the other one all right that's the pilot then uh yeah she's a tough cookie all right the pirate here they'll beat you down for a bite to eat flash a bit of coin and you may never be heard from again all right the pirate has a reaction if you the player played a card this turn i don't remember why i worded it that way but there must have been a reason if you the player played a card this turn this card has plus one to its combat rolls until the end of turn well um generally it's not going to get that bonus on its turn because the player won't play anything but it will generally get that bonus on your turn uh very simply don't play a card before attacking this or um attack it flank because he is a melee guy so attack with flank but um overall it's not a super powerful card and not a priority target it is only worth one point uh however his ability to give himself plus one it is a bit annoying so um i usually just like to <laughs> defeat it on principle because it just it just annoys me that's the pirate the pyromancers pyromancers love blasting the battlefield indiscriminately with destructive magic play damage all players cards so this is very similar to ninian pelinor in vanishing point however he damages only all players cards not all cards in play making him uh yeah he's he's a jerk he's gonna come in play damage all your cards again it's a play effect so most of the time you're not gonna see this coming he's gonna come down blast you and it is worth at the very least to keep in mind that this card exists in the game so when you look in your board state always think what if they get a sweeping damage effect because it can happen and that's this guy other than that there's no other real strategy you can employ uh other than if you have some kind of deck manipulation i guess but um that's the power master he's gonna come down deal damage and then you take your revenge on him and beat him up that's the power master the ranger rangers will stalk their quarry for many hours and days striking when it least expects it play each player must reset a card in their hand so this isn't bad this is actually a like weaker version of a, of a similar effect it's going to reset a card in your hand or which most of the time is not going to really affect you that much you get to choose what you reset it may even if you have a card with reset ability it may even trigger it so um not terrible at all this is one of those cards that's just yeah it's okay it doesn't it doesn't hurt me that much he's only worth, worth one point so kill it if you have the opportunity but not when you really have to kind of go after um because he's not going to really affect the board state a whole lot all right the ravager ravager here is kind of a pain ravages are so wild in combat that it may take them several moments to realize they've been killed death the player whose effect killed this card must damage one of their cards then play the top card of the nemesis deck so quite a pain when it dies it's gonna deal with free damage and play another card so that's a double whammy i would say because this card is not on the board it's not really a threat it's actually worse when it dies so again this is one of those cards that i don't think you want to go out of your way to kill it is worth two points but i think the better strategy is just line up something that matches well against it but not necessarily fight it and 
use your attacks against other things and let this uh let this card keep bashing against you until it kills itself and then you get to choose where you put the damage and play the top card in the nemesis deck and then you feel you deal with all that um so i don't think you need to worry about um actually uh focusing this down uh like some of the other uh priority targets the rifleman here relentless and deadly accurate you can't take a moment to rest if one of them is hunting you down. Reaction, when a minion comes into play on this battlefield, one player must damage one of their cards. So, yeah, you want to get rid of this guy. This is like Cthulhu. When a minion comes into play on this battlefield, one player must damage one of their cards. Um, yeah, it's over. We talked about this already. That's bad. Free damage every turn. Priority target. You want to kill him as... As soon as possible the drawback with this guy is that he is a flank type so he's a he's a 2-4 uh, which means that it's very possible that he can get placed way back in a back line and support or he will he'll often be in either flank which will make him a bit tough to um, take down or he'll be out in support where you can't really reach him and still his effect will be triggering so you need to find ways to take this guy out um, if you have some direct damage of your own anything like that but he is very much a priority target because this will get out of hand especially paired with uh Cthilla. so go after the rifleman don't let him come to you all right the rogue here um this is kind of almost like a joke card I put in. Even when caught, rogues have a way of escaping and looking for another way to strike back. Reaction, if this card received damage, shuffle it into the nemesis deck. So it's a little bit of a joke card in that it comes out, if you hit it, it runs away. Uh, notably, when it does that, it will heal. Um, however, if the Nemesis deck does run out, um, it won't be able to do this ability. However, when you're playing with multiple players, the deck will be really large. It'll be very unlikely that the deck run out. So this is a very difficult card to kill. Um, so I wouldn't really even count on trying to get the points from this. Um, you pretty much should just focus on and when this card comes out just focus on just just hit it hit it once let it go shuffle away and if you can do that you almost almost turn it into a wasted draw for the nemesis um because they played a card that you know maybe wasn't that effective in in, in combat so um i would actually not be disappointed to see the rogue hit play just don't expect to actually be able to defeat it and get the point from it so that is the rogue the shaman here shamans live in balance with nature if you disturb the natural order they will bury you under it play select any other minion card in play and place it on top of the nemesis deck so essentially this is going to heal it's going to reset I don't want to see use that word reset. It's going to heal a minion essentially, right? Because it's going to put them back on top of the nemesis deck, which will remove damage on them. And then if they have like a play effect, they're going to get to use it again when they play it. So it's sort of going to recharge uh, one of the uh, nemesis cards. However, the great thing is, is that you get to pick what that is. Uh, so pick something good, pick something that's not going to be that bad. Um, but depending on the board state, you may not have that much of a, of a choice and may be forced into picking something that you rather not, but not a whole lot of um, strategy there other than just pick the worst card um, and let them get that back. Don't give them cards back that have play effects though. You definitely don't want to do that. Other than that, he's a 4-2 that'll just stay in play and uh, he's worth three big points. So um, yeah, uh, he does his thing and then he'll be, you know, kind of, should be at your mercy after that sharpshooter now this one is not quite as straightforward Shoop sh sharpshooters don't just sit back firing from safety they're mobile and they take out key targets of the enemy reaction after this card receives damage damage the card that caused it so <laughs> this is a tough card to deal with because the main way almost the only way to get rid of cards is by dealing damage to them and she's gonna deal the damage back in addition to her own attacks so this card can potentially poop out a lot of damage on you i would say for this card you just kind of want to focus it down as soon as possible if you happen to have a card that um 
an instant kill and cause it to sacrifice that'd be great those are extremely few and far between so i wouldn't count on that um so otherwise you want a combination of just focusing this down and damage as soon as possible um and or have some healing effects uh to back up your guys because you will be taking damage uh from this card but she is a priority target worth three points take her out get the points and be happy that's the sharpshooter the summoner summoners wield powerful magic that can call forth magical beats beasts quickly changing the math of battle play summon the top card of the nemesis deck very simple it comes into play and it's gonna come with a friend see the friend fl friend floating over his shoulder um so um not a whole lot of strategy as far as preparing for this you just got to deal with the after effects um it's gonna put a guy in play and it's gonna put a, you know and it'll, it, this card is a card in play and it'll have another one so it's gonna give the nemesis potentially temple over you um but i like to think of it as um extra um extra points of the board potentially for that however if you have minions and or nemesis entities that um have abilities that trigger off of cards coming into play this can be really bad so that's that's why the summoner um uh is a little bit of a scary card to see um but you know you really can't plan around it because you don't know when it's coming most of the time um so you gotta deal with it but it, it will often lead to some uh swingy turns because he's gonna come out and then he's gonna bring out something else and the other thing's probably gonna have ability that'll trigger so you may have a little bit of a chain reaction when this guy comes out um but you know you hopefully survive the aftermath and then take him out for mostly a free point swashbuckler with her skilled sword play and guile it may seem like you're winning but she intends to last laugh death each player must damage one of their cards so when she dies, she basically does a big blast to all, the, all your cards. However, um, again, like many of these effects, the player gets to choose where they put their damage. So you can put it where it least hurts you. Um, and again, this is one of those cards that I would put as you don't really go after this card that much. It's only worth a point and you suffer a penalty for killing it. Actually, a pretty big penalty. So you kind of even want to kill this card. Um, kind of wait and get around to it when you can or if you need that last point to win that's the swashbuckler the thief thieves will steal anything that isn't nailed down and if you get in their way they'll steal your life too play each player must reset all cards in their hand without drawing replacements now it's funny because all the versions of this card did not have that without drawing replacements part and people kept getting confused by it they thought oh it I do I draw more cards so I, I put this in to clarify it um, that it resets all your cards and you don't draw a replacement so that means that it's gonna come into play it's gonna get rid of all your cards in your hand and then you by the when your turn comes around you're gonna start your turn with no cards in your hand at the end of your turn you'll be able to draw back as normal but it's just gonna mean um, essentially gonna mean that you won't be able to play or reset cards from your hand uh, for one turn which could be quite pivotal but it's the nemesis uh doing it kind of randomly so it the timing may or may not be the greatest for you it may end up helping you so that's the thief the tinker tinkers can't help but fool uh, uh bleh. Man, I can't speak right now. Tinkers can't help but fool around with contraptions they find, sometimes with disastrous results. So, so similar to the swashbuckler, when she dies, death damage all players' cards. However, she damages all the cards, whereas the swashbuckler deals must damage one of their cards. So that's a little bit of a weaker one. This one, she's worth two points, but she damages all players' cards. And it's only the players' cards, so she doesn't blow up uh, the minion cards. So, um, yeah quite selfish uh again another one that here's where you gotta like really just use your own judgment whether you want to kill this or not um if you get this early in the game when you don't have a lot of cards in play it may be worth focusing down this down and killing it so that you minimize its effects um otherwise you can hold off on killing this until like the last minute when um you know you've you you just on the cusp of winning the game or something like that so i wouldn't say go after this uh wholeheartedly in most cases 
The Valkyrie. It's an honor for a Valkyrie to die in battle, but they will still look will still look deaf in the face and say not today. Uh, if you get that reference, kudos to you. Ongoing, this card requires one extra damage token in order to be killed. So we've seen this ability on Sam Armitage, and here we have a Nemesis card that has the ability. And very simply, she is just going to be tough to take down. She is a 5-1, which means she's going to most of the time be in melee combat, and she's quite good at it very good at it and requires extra damage to be killed so she can be a tough cookie she can actually be up there in front really making life miserable for you however with her one flank that's the weakness right there you want to focus her down with flank attacks if you can toss in some direct damage awesome she is worth two points so it's worth spending some uh direct damage on her to take her out because uh, otherwise she's gonna be uh she's a very good uh front line uh minion for the nemesis the vicar acting as a direct agent of the de deity a vicar's mere presence instills awe and reverence in all presence start so start of minion uh, start of the nemesis turn choose any minion card with at least one damage token on it and heal it so it will do a free heal for the nemesis every start of nemesis turn that is quite good that's quite powerful uh, again a priority target you see this down you want to kill it because it essentially means it, it's almost like once per turn one of your attacks is going to be negated think of it that way yeah you don't want want that so focus fire on this and take it out as soon as possible and it's worth a cool three points for you the warden we're getting close to the end here the warden wardens take up defensive positions around their leaders to protect them from enemy attacks reaction when any minion in this battlefield takes damage during combat place the damage on this card instead we've seen this ability on brick from the monster kids and kind of same difference um she's gonna just take damage that would otherwise go on other cards um and in a way you can kind of just go about your business because you're not really losing damage the damage is going to focus on here uh it just means that those higher priority targets that you want to get rid of uh may end up staying in play for longer so for that particular case you may want to just focus fire on the warden um because the damage is going to go to her anyway so might as well just send them direct to her so send it and that's the warning um yeah my recommendation would be try to focus fire on it but um you could also just not do that and just prioritize attacking um you, you, uh, doing advantageous attacks to other guys because the damage is still going to filter to her um but yeah, the warden can be a pain in the ass, but it, her, her impact on the battlefield is really going to depend on what the other cards there are. So um, hard to judge this one because it, it, it can be hit or miss for the nemesis. It's usually a hit. So yeah, that's the warden. And I think we're, no, we're not at the end yet. We got the warlock here. Warlocks draw their magical skills and abilities from the dead and dying things around them. Play, heal minion cards a number of times equal to the number of cards in the nemesis discard pile. So um, this is almost a luck based card. Like if it comes late in the game, it may heal the minions for a lot or it may heal them for nothing or little. So hard to predict this card because it's a play card and just be aware that it exists and it can be a big burst of healing for the nemesis. Um, but there's not a whole lot that you can do to prepare for that. So you just got to deal with the after effects. And then I think we're at the last. Yes, we're at the last one here. The warrior warriors spend a lifetime on the front lines of war. They wouldn't have it any other way. Play this card gains plus one to its die rolls until the end of this turn. So not a super powerful ability because he is only a level one card. He's going to come out. He's a four two. So he's usually going to go in melee and he's going to get plus one to his die rolls um, for that turn. So basically one of his attacks are going to get plus one. Uh, potentially will be a five um, melee attacker for one turn is usually what's going to happen. Um, yeah, he very often will get a free one damage on you. Not free, but, you know, usually he. You know with, with a five attack he, he has a good chance of, of winning um 
so that's as best as gonna be and then other than that he doesn't do much on the board so again not really a priority target just you know deal with the effect and then kill him afterwards so that's it that's um all the cards in the nemesis set uh, hopefully you found that interesting going over them uh, a lot less lore to talk about these guys because they are just minions um, they don't have like individual stories to them uh, and that is on purpose uh, but stay tuned for the next deep dive which is gonna be shattered fantasy and that's a core set so there's gonna be more uh, lore there uh, with those cards um, and remember, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. I will be answering them. And again, if you're not familiar with the game, but you find this interesting, go check out the official Animus playlist and you'll have a ton of information there. This, this video will also be on that playlist as well as the other deep dives. So anyway, that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.